Uh, hey, it's Alex. I'm the developer in LandNav. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview. Uh, for those of you who are just coming into the playtest and you haven't played this game before, uh, I'm going to give you a kind of a quick crash course of just how, how basically the controls of the game. Um, uh, like I said, there isn't training yet for how to do LandNav. I can't teach you how to do LandNav in one video. Um, so if you uh, if, you're, if you're looking to learn, you know, kind of you know from the very from the very basics, um, you'll have to go to YouTube for the moment. Uh, the training that will be in this game isn't, isn't ready yet. Uh, that will be coming in the future. Uh, but if you do know how to do land nav, or you are, uh, you know, you're gonna kind of do some self-learning on YouTube, or you know, maybe, maybe reading the Army up in, and then trying to apply those concepts in this game. Um, the, this video is going to show you, uh, you know, how, how to do the simple things like move your map, move your compass, move around in the game world, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, when you first start the game, you'll get an option to select a user profile. At the moment, you, you can type your name, whatever you want in here, uh, but it won't be remembered. So you know, don't bother with their name. The save slot will be. Uh, what that means is if you load this first one uh, and you're playing a game and then you exit out of it and you come back later, you'll be able to load that same exercise and pick up where you left off. Uh, and if you don't want to overwrite an exercise, you can just choose a new, a new save file. And then, of course, you can delete them. So you can load a save file. The uh, call next button, you know, nothing's going on there yet at the moment. The training modules are not uh, filled out, so um, you know you don't need to worry about the training at the moment. And then also, uh, as mentioned in my uh, state of the development video, the uh, options is uh, currently not plugged in because this this menu system's kind of getting uh, overhauled at the moment. Um, so you know, if the game is running uh, laggy on your computer, uh, don't. Uh, d d you know, it, me it means you can't, might not be able to play it right now at the moment. But in just a couple weeks, I'll be getting the uh, graphics options put in, so that you'll be able to, uh, you know, tweak it to your uh, computer's needs. So, um, and, and so right now, it's it's default set to like ultra graphics settings. So you know, if, if it's running a little lag for you, that doesn't mean your computer won't be able to run the game. Uh, so you, what you can do right now is uh, click on the exercise tab. And here's where you can <coughs> set up an exercise. Uh, like I was saying earlier, if you want to continue an exercise that you were playing before, you just click on this button here. And whichever one you were playing last will get loaded. To start a new exercise, the first thing you'll probably want to do is hover over this thing called the exercise key. And this gives you a description of basically what these uh, kind of weird names for the exercise mean. So the, ex the exercises have names like Alpha Bravo 03. And what that does is it describes where on the map it's going to be, roughly how far you're going to have to go, how many points you're going to have to climb, and that gives you a general sense of how long is it going to take, and then you know how difficult is it going to be. Uh, so, um, in my case, I'll do uh, Alpha Bravo, or sorry, Alpha Alpha 03, and then you can see down here it tells you what the time hack is going to be for this exercise. Uh, if you want to do really well, you go for outstanding. Uh, above average is, is pretty good too. And if you uh, just want to pass, you know, you have to be above the no-go time. Um, keep in mind, I haven't played this with every single exercise, so some of these are kind of a guess. Uh, and what that means is, you know, if, if you're a land nav expert and, you know, you do really good, you don't make a single mistake, you're running the whole time, and, and you still don't get the outstanding uh, time, time hack, uh, don't sweat it, you know, it, it might be a little bit unrealistic. Um, so you know, just, just do your best <laughs> and, and that's enough. Um, yeah, they, they should, they should be, you know, ballpark, uh, you know, reasonable, but, but I'm just saying don't stress about it. Uh, you, you can turn on beginner assistance. What that does is, uh, when you find a control point, that control point will show its, uh, grid coordinates. Uh, and what that means is, you know, if you're a little lost or something like that and you bump into a control point, it gives you a known point, so then you can plot on your map and, and know exactly where you are. Uh, so that can really be useful, and and even if you're not a beginner, uh, you know, if, you know, you just just want a little bit uh, of a uh, you know kind of um, easier experience, you, you can turn that on. There's no no, no, sh no shame at all. There's plenty of training, um, in which case you know it, it is done that way. You can set the time of day. Um, if you play at night, it is much more difficult. You won't get any extra bonuses for it at the moment. <laughs> uh, in the future, I'll be adding some kind of stat tracking so that you can kind of get extra rewards if you you know choose to take on more difficult exercises. But uh, I'm just going to leave it at 1300 and start the exercise. Uh, you'll notice this personal record thing here again. That's 
not everything's plugged in, so you, it won't be saving your personal records yet. Uh, so when you load into the game, the first thing you'll probably want to do is, if you see down there in the lower right corner, it says help, the H key. So just press the H key. That pauses the game, and now you can take a look at all the controls. Um, so it's a, it, it looks like a lot, but don't worry. Most of the controls kind of do multiple things. So you don't have to memorize too many. You also notice that on the right side of the screen there, you have a few kind of just good reminders. Um, what your pace count is, uh, what your rate of movement is, uh, how to read a how to read a eight digit grade coordinate, and some other things. Uh, importantly, is also the GM angle there. You can also find uh, a lot of that on your on the map key itself. Uh, so if you forget your controls or um, uh, you just want a reminder, you can look here on this uh, screen. I'll go through them quickly, uh, just kind of step by step in the way that you'll do it as if you're playing exercise. So once you load into the exercise, uh, you kind of need to hit the ground running because the, the clock is ticking. In order to see your watch, uh, press the space bar. And when you press the space bar, this is your planning mode. So uh, you can see here, you got a watch on the lower left side of the screen. And it tells you that the local time is uh, 1300 and it's, and it's counting. If you want to see, uh, I'm gonna move to a spot where there's a little bit of shadow because the sun's kind of shining on it in a way. It's a little bit hard to see. Let's try it right there. That's better. So you can see it's 1300 and the clock's ticking. And if I press uh, in for notepad or the number three key, uh, that brings up my notepad. And here I can see that you know, if I want to get the outstanding, I have to report no later than 1325 and, and so on. If you prefer a stopwatch, you can press T for time, and that's going to cycle through these different time hacks. So your outstanding time has, you know, this amount of time left. Press T again, above average, no go, and then back to local time. So for the most part, uh, tools are tied to the key that uh, is the first letter of their name, but they're also tied to the number key. So N is notepad. Uh, T is for time, uh, and then you can also get your tools from the uh, number of keys. So uh, one is compass, two is protractor, three is notepad. And then uh, if you just press that key again, they'll either go off the screen or come back on to their default position. So um, for plotting your points, what you'll do is while you're here in this uh, kind of tool planning mode, which again, you uh, you can get into that anytime by pressing space. It will automatically bring up your uh, <coughs> your map, compass, and protractor. If you don't see them and you want them, just press one, two, uh, or one, two uh, keys to uh, bring them to the center screen. Or uh, compass can be got with C, and protractor can be with B. Okay, so you'll first thing you'll do when you're plotting your points is uh, you'll read your uh, um, start and end point and then your control points are here so your start point grid your end point grid and then your control points um, you can go at them in any order you like so uh, as an example I'll just plot like one of these so 0 2 7 0 uh, so um, you can just click and drag your map once you've clicked it though if you prefer uh, to move uh, kind of in a precise way you can use the W A S and D that will move it um, at precise increments if you hold down shift and then press W, A, S, and D, it nudges it just, just a tiny bit. And if you hold down alt, it moves it uh, quite a bit faster. Uh, so that's just different ways you can uh, manipulate your tool. You can also rotate it by pressing Q and E, and it will rotate one degree at a time. And if you hold down alt, it'll rotate by five degrees at a time. Now, if you've done something crazy and maybe you accidentally moved it off screen, you can reset the map's position to with either the M key or uh, number four key. Um, uh, this is just like the other tools. So uh, when you're plotting your points, you'll probably want to zoom in, get a little closer, and you can do that just by put, uh, pushing the mouse wheel forward. And if you push it again, it just uh, comes back between these two positions. Uh, so let's go ahead and plot one point. So zero, two, seven, zero. So I'll find zero, two, come up to seven, zero. And then I'll just press V uh, or number two to you know, get my protractor front and center. I'll just line those up. And again, if you're kind of messing with it with your mouse and, and you don't like the way that feels, you can uh, move it with your WASD keys. Uh, and then for fine control, I like to hold down shift and then 
use your Adobe Dice and keys, and then you can just nudge it right into place. Um, and whichever tool you clicked on last is going to be the one that moves. So if I bring up my compass here, uh, but I start pressing WSD keys, the last thing I clicked was my projector, so it's going to be the one that moves. And I want to move my compass, I just click on it, and then I can, I can move it in the same way. Okay, so um, I got my protractor selected. So now uh, let me do the 100 meters. It's uh, 96, 77. So let me get that to where you can see all the numbers easily. So 96, and now now it's, here's where you'll notice when each time you press uh, you know WASD keys, you'll see it moves at exactly uh, a uh, 50 meter interval. And if you hold down Alt, now it moves at a 500 meter interval. And if you hold down Shift, it moves at a it's it's not exact, but it's it's about um, 10 degrees. So you can you can um, kind of uh, estimate your your tens like that. So nine six seven seven. So I'll come to nine five and then go up just a just a hair. So nine six and then seven seven is about right there. And to mark on the map, I just right click. Um, you don't have to have selected the map first. If you just right click, it'll automatically draw. If you don't like the spot you put your mark, just click it again and it'll it'll erase. Uh, be aware that you can also click these and, and move them and then uh, use the WISD keys to move them around. I might actually remove that because sometimes if you're clicking around on your map and dragging it, you can accidentally click your mark and move it and then you have to you know replace it, which can be a little annoying. So in the future I might remove the ability to uh, to move the marks. And so that's how you'll plot a point. And usually the way you'll work is, you know, you got your protractor here, you mark you make mark one, then you just press, you know, V or, or two to get it out of the way, click and drag your map around, get to where you want it. V to bring it back, you know, do your plotting, and then so that's that's kind of the way I work. It's, it's relatively quick and efficient. Um, so that's that's plotting a point. That's using your tools. Now, what you may want to do is let's kind of put a second point. What you may want to do is um, start planning your route. And so there's there's a couple uh, ways you can do this. You can make a few notes about your points. So for instance, let's say say I got three points here, and uh, yeah, let's say this is my start, start, start and end is the same on the sixers. Side. So this is my start and end. Let's say these are my three points. If I want to, um, maybe not necessarily do these in order. You know, um, I might want to make a note here just so that when I get to the control point, I don't write the wrong code uh, in 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 the wrong slot. So I might, you know, put up one, uh, three, two, just as a reminder to me that I'm going to this one first, this one second, this one third. Or you can even type short notes in here. So you might say, uh, this is the uh, westernmost one. And this is uh, the one that's up the hill. You know, wh whatever you want. You'll be able to type basically till the end of the line. If you want to make more notes, just come down here and click on notes. And then you get basically an infinite page where you can type as many notes as you want. So you could say, you know, 230 degrees or 100 meters. Uh, and then you know whatever whatever notes you want to make you know watch out for the big ravine uh, and if you type to the end of the page you'll just get a scroll bar so you can keep going uh, great so that's how you make your uh, mission notes uh, here's where you can see um, the uh, <laughs> I just realized this is included this actually tells you the answer so right now you're cheating um, you have the answer already in there as this hint um, but uh, in the future that won't be there, you know, so this is just for debugging purposes. But when you get to your control point, uh, just hovering above it is going to be a, a four-digit code and you'll just, whatever that code is, you'll just enter it. So 1265. Um, but uh, this having the hint there that shows you the, uh, the answer is, is, is um, n not the way it will be in the, uh, in the full game. That's just that's just there to make sure everything's working. Um, I think that covers thing we need to know about the basics of the tools. Oh yes, so we're talking about uh, using your protractor. So your protractor, uh, you'll you know you'll naturally wanting to be rotating it around and stuff. To, to, you know if you want to measure the distance between one point and another, just line it up, and then use your Q and E. If you want to move it a little faster, hold on Alt. And then that's gonna rotate, so you can um, easily measure distances. 
if you want to quickly reset it, just press, you know, push V twice and it's going to come back to its default position. If you want to use the string on it, or the, uh, the straight edge, uh, just line up the center point with your point and then uh, to rotate the string or in the case of the compass, the, uh, the bezel on it, you use the bracket keys. That's the keys up by your backspace key. Um, and they work similar to Q and E. Each time you press, press them, it moves it one degree. If you hold down Alt, it goes five degrees. And if you hold down Shift, it goes 90 degrees. Uh, so you can kind of quickly uh, get to your point, line it up. And then don't forget to uh, do your GM angle. If you want to see what it is, you can look down at the map key here. It's five degrees. And you can also push H to uh, check out that help screen again. Say the same, same instructions there. Um, so in this case, if we're going from uh, map to compass, you know, if we're going from grid to magnetic, we'll want to add five degrees. So, you know, rather than doing some math in my head and potentially uh, messing up a number, usually what I'll do is uh, line up with my target and then just push it, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and then I'll just take a look here. Okay, so that's, you know, 234 degrees. And then uh, you can, you know, make a note of that and make a note about that in your notes. So 234. Great, so that covers your notes, um, your protractor, and of course if you're uh, hardcore and you don't like to use protractors, you can do all the same stuff with your compass as well using the, uh, the ruler on your side, and it, it will rotate from that point there. Actually the uh, rotation point's a little off, it should rotate from right there, so I'll have to fix that. Uh, but Pretty much everyone's using protractors anyways um <laughs> but that is something off the fix uh, so like i said you want to operate the bezel on your compass it's the same keys you just push that to the bracket keys left and right and if you want to do a fast hold down alt or shift okay um so that covers all your tools so i'm going to hit space to get on tool mode and uh, by default you're going to be in third person mode which kind of gives you better better situational awareness. Uh, just like, you know, any, any kind of standard game, you move around using the WASD keys and your mouse to look around, and uh, you can look in one direction and move in another. Um, if you uh, prefer to play in first person view or you want to take a look at your compass, just press F, and you'll come to first person view and you'll see your compass is down there below, and you can just uh, zoom in to look at it. If it's in a weird position, just reset its position by pushing, uh, pushing uh, either the one key or C, and then it'll, it'll cycle, you know, from its um, side position to its uh, center position. And if you like even more control, you can just go into your to the tool mode. You can move the compass out to wherever you like. Just leave it there, and then come back, and now you can see its its position is is uh, staying where you left it. Uh, but typically, the center hold position is. Uh, the most convenient. So you can just look down, you can uh, check your azimuth, and then set up your bezel. Again, just hit those bracket keys one degree at a time, or hold on all for five, and shift for 90. So you can line up your bezel, and then you can uh, move along your azimuth. Uh, now, if you're moving pretty far, you probably don't want to sit there and hold down the W key for ages. So you can just press tab, and it'll automatically move. Uh, and then if you um, press WS, uh, he'll, he'll automatically stop. Um, but you can still kind of move side to side and he'll keep moving so you can get around obstacles easily. Um, so that's your basic movement. Uh, you'll probably want to count your pace. Uh, you can press B for beads. That's going to show some uh, some ranger beads on your screen. They, uh, that's just, you, you can leave them up there if you like or if you want it to be kind of automatic. When you press X, that will count 100 meters and then it'll automatically go away. Uh, so you can count all your 100 meter beads and then if you want to log your one kilometer bead press Z and you can see the Z one moves or the uh, sorry the one kilometer one moves and then to reset them you just, just cycle through them all and they'll reset and uh, if, you if you've forgotten what you set them at or whatever and you want to just take a quick look without moving them that's your B for beads okay um, so that's your tools that's your pace count uh, that's your compass 
Uh, if you want to shoot an azimuth using the compass sight, push R, and it's going to pop up in your screen. And I don't have a uh, kind of a, uh, a magnifying uh, shader yet for the uh, you know for for for, for the peep sight. Um, so I added a UI there that kind of shows you uh, the degree, so it's so it's easier to read. Uh, and then the same thing as before. If you prefer to zoom in and get a little bit better look, you can still use that zoom in. Uh, zoom in there so you can get a precise asthma. Uh, if you start running, it will automatically uh, go away. So um, there's a bug right now. You can see if I have it up shooting an azimuth and I run, when it comes back, I no longer have that UI showing what my uh, degrees is. All you gotta do is just push R and, and bring it back. That's just a bug that I'll, I'll fix in the near future. Um, cool, so that's I think covers all your basic controls. Uh, if you want to uh, jog, you can press shift. You don't have to hold it down, it's a toggle. So um, if you want to go back to walking at a pace, press shift. You'll notice that you do have a helper UI there in the lower left corner of the screen that's counting your pace. Uh, it goes up to 10, uh, so it does help you somewhat, but you do still have to keep the log of the 10s in your head and then, and then log it on your beads. Um, so, you know, after you've gone, uh, check your help screen. So after you've gone uh, 65 to 70 paces, that means you've gone uh, 100 meters. Uh, only if you're moving at a pace. If you are moving uh, the jog, it's, it's not really feasible to count these. Uh, you can you, you can still estimate distance, but you know, just as in real life, you, you, you can't very well accurately uh, count your uh, pace if you're jogging. Uh, also be aware, just as in real life, uh, it's not possible to walk perfectly in a straight line, so if you just push auto move and you're on your azimuth and you think you're going to end up at exactly your point, even if there was no you know bushes or anything in your way, uh, you might uh, be surprised because um, just as in real life, you do need to pick out landmarks that are on your azimuth and uh, you know make sure you're using those as reference points because uh, it's hard to tell, but you will move slightly you know, left or right um, over the course of, you know, a few hundred meters. So um, I think that covers movement. Uh, you know how to uh, walk, run, move at pace. Uh, if you, perchance, want to reset that pace count there, I think it's the comma key. Yeah, the comma key. Um, you usually won't need to do that, but it's there if you like it. Uh, you also notice that green bar at the bottom. Uh, if you do a lot of running, if you um, bust through some brush or you go up steep hills, you don't get enough, it's going to start depleting a little faster. That's your stamina. If it runs out completely, it's going to make it to where you can't run. So uh, that is just there to remind you that um, you do need to uh, be a little bit strategic when you plan your routes. You know, sometimes uh, avoiding you know, thick brush and water drainage and places like that or avoiding going up and down valleys. Uh, even if it means the route's a little longer, that can sometimes save you time because you won't get as exhausted and you'll be able to move faster. Okay, um, let's see. Is there anything else that I did not cover? I think I've hit all the major things. Uh, oh, our flashlight. You might need your flashlight. Um, yeah, so uh, if you're looking at your tools by pressing space and you're having trouble seeing things because it's dark, press... Uh, either L for light, or uh, you can also press the Y key, or I think number number six. Uh, so any of those keys will turn on your light, and it's a uh, it's a tactical red light, you know, so the enemies can't see you from from far away. Um, so it's not a it's not a headlamp that you can uh, you know light up the night with, but it's just enough to see your tools. Uh, in the future, there might have the civilian mode or something where you can use an actual flashlight, but uh, for now it's it's all military style. Uh, great, so that's all the basic controls. Uh, that should be enough to get you started, assuming you already know how to use uh, these tools and, and kind of do the basics on land now. Um, so uh, yeah, have fun, good luck out there. If you have any questions or uh, definitely if you find any bugs or have any uh, you know kind of general grievances, something that was annoying to you, something that was confusing to you, you couldn't figure out something that seems like it should be easy to figure out. Uh, just let me know in the Discord. You know, I don't don't worry about being polite or hurting my feelings or anything. Just just let me know how it was for you. So uh, right now is the uh, 
time and point in the project where it's still relatively easy for me to change things, tweak things, so it's a good time to uh, consider you know, player's feedback. So uh, don't, don't hold back on that. Okay, I'll uh, go ahead and save the video here. And, uh, and uh, thanks, thanks for playing, guys, and I look forward to your feedback. All right, bye.